So you look back, I mean, there's some moments that change our lives forever and they, you know, we maybe don't realize it at the time, um, but we look back and we realize that and obviously, you know, getting your first record contract, having your first number one hit, your first album being enormous, being named best new male artist of the year. These are life-changing moments. Um, are there other life-changing moments you can look back and say, mm, that moment my life changed right there? From a career standpoint, um, yes. Um, when the producer walked in that night, James Stroud, when he walked in and heard me sing and he liked the original songs I was doing, Live Until I Die was one of those songs. And uh, getting that nod after being rejected by every label in Nashville and then the biggest producer, you know, of the last decade comes in and says, you're the guy. My career launched like a rocket taking off. I mean, there was, you couldn't have stopped it with a freight train, you know, no way. And he was the, the reason for that. You know, he, he knew what he was gonna do with me in the studio. He knew, he, he liked the songs I'd written. He found me, What's It To You? You know, which was a gigantic monster hit coming out of the deal. But though, the first time I heard What's It To You on the radio, I was in Beaumont, I was driving in my truck and it came on the radio, I just pulled over and pulled over on the side of the road and had a moment and uh, couldn't believe it. You know, there I am on the radio. It was like a live, you know. And you can play or you can play a song on, you know, a CD or you can play, you can stream it, you know, off of Spotify or, or Pandora or wherever you stream it, play it in your car. It does not have the same sound as when it's coming through the radio. The radio has that some some stuff they do, and it just sounds like it's there's life to it. It's alive, and uh, I still you know to this day I'd rather hear myself on the radio than than on uh, on one of those streaming services. Every career has ups and downs. What advice would you have for someone? who's at the peak of their career right now in anything. There's no song, what goes up <laughs> must <laughs> come down. And it, you know, you, there's no way you stay on top forever. You, you, you do have peaks and valleys or you have a peak and then <laughs> just a valley. Uh, you know, I, I've been through those peaks and valleys in my career and, and uh, the valleys are tough. They, they really are. And sometimes you don't know if you're going to come back out of them. And, you know, I've had a lull in my career at radio where we, we haven't played on radio for, you know, uh, almost a decade, it, meaning new songs. Um, and we have a new album out right now. And that album is called Texas to Tennessee. And it debuted number one on iTunes. That shocked me, you know, that, that an artist that, that hasn't had a new hit in nearly a decade um, has an album that comes out and the new audience is buying it. And, you know, some of my, my advice is don't give up if you do hit one of those valleys, you know, that, that you have the gift, find it, and don't listen to any naysayers. Do what you do to the best of your ability. That's why you're, you made it in the first place. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that we're going to have more hits. You know, I, I, from for myself, I think we are going to have more hits. And radio is liking this new album, and they're telling us that they are, and they're starting to play the songs on it. So, you know, it's the other advice I would say is if you if you have a family, you know, a wife, husband, or kids that. You can never give them too much of yourself. That, you know, I've learned through all these years and, and COVID helped me realize this more than anything. Being home for a year and a half helped strengthen the 
those bonds and those ties and those those moments, but there's nothing like like proximity, being close, and uh, and your career will flourish because of those bonds, and your family will want it for you, and you'll just have more strength. So I mean, I know that's kind of preachy, but then I really believe. If you could go back and do it all again, what would you do differently? Not one damn thing. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. There aren't some moments where you wish, I wish I would have been more present. I wish I, I would have enjoyed that more. Yeah, there's that. But I would say where my life is today, um, that there are no accidents, that um, I made a lot of mistakes. And uh, I don't believe in perfect. I don't believe there's there was one perfect there was one perfect man that walked this earth, and uh, and and I'm not him, and I don't know anybody else that is perfect. And so where I am today, I feel like my my wife knows that I love her beyond anything, and I feel like. All seven of my children know that without a doubt that I am there at any moment that they need.